Yes, there will be some type of a decline, without a question, in the next 10 to 20 months, and it will be uh, earth-shaking, it will be saber-rattling, and it'll have Wall Street in a tizzy, and it will create headlines that will be, uh, that will dwarf anything that's happened at this point in time. So that was market wizard Paul Tudor Jones back in 1987 predicting the Black Monday crash that he would later become famous for making a killing on while all the other hedge funds got eaten alive. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. I first learned about Paul Tudor Jones when I saw an image online of a photocopy of his old trading rules from back in that time. The thing that stood out to me was they were mostly about psychology, not technical analysis or fundamental analysis. He talks about taking breaks from trading to center himself, breathing exercises, visualizations, be tough, take pain, take pain, take pain. I knew there was something profound in seeing these principles for success as a trader, so that led me to this documentary where they follow Jones around on a day where he makes money and a day where he loses money. These are a trader's takeaways. That sell 540 market, sell 540. Sell 540. I'm speechless, it's phenomenal, record volume advanced declines so everybody all of a sudden is starting to turn bulls and then no one in the world's going to sell this thing the bulls will be on the stampede all the way to the club you don't stop a train even if there's a wall of selling the train is going to go through that brick wall and take out a lot of bears they're bullish so jones chooses to spend the first part of his morning before the market opens on the phone with other hedge fund managers to get their perspective what do you think bonds and stocks bonds first i'm very bullish on both of them my guess is that you're going to have to fool enough people, you know, get some people short, get people out of their long positions, and you're going to have to do that by looking like shit for most of the day. Hold on, let's pause there for a second. Did you guys hear that? So larger players in the market, they're not just playing their own opinions of what they think the market is going to do. They're specifically playing against retail traders. You can hear in this particular clip, the one guy says to the other guy, he is also bullish, but my guess is you're going to have to fool enough people to get them out of their longs by looking like shit most of the day. Take pain, take pain, take pain. Pain. Zach, what do you think? No matter how you cut it, the news today is bullish on stocks. Yeah, that's why. And, and the thing is, everyone's going to be watching bonds and euros, and that's going to be the trend. 1020, 1020 lower. So as the market opens, Jones is passionately buying. Be buying, give me a total. Just tell me approximately how many. Come on. I hope I'll be a. Jones is trading with such large size, he can't just go in all at once or he'll cause the market to spike. So he's got to slowly layer in his bids. But the problem is the market is moving with him too quickly and he's not able to build a big enough position. Finish it up right now. Yeah, go up. I got more. Go down now. So he's like desperately trying to get those orders filled. Out there. Time to offer, offer, offer 1,075 right now. So now Jones is unloading a bunch of the position he just accumulated in order to trick the floor traders into thinking that somebody with size is going short in order to keep the price of the market down. This is setting up as a beautiful trend day. Look at this. I know. It's not even moving. Yeah. Buy 300 at 90 or better right now. In time, do not fuck around. I want to buy it. Okay. Quote me, quote me, quote me. What's the market? 90, 85, 90, 85, 90. 80, 90 for 3,000. 90 for 3,000. Fill or kill. Fill or kill means the trader on the opposite end either has to do it now or not at all. You up. All righty. Let me know what we've done. Call sign back. Let me know what we've done. Well, I think we have a position. So in just the first 10 minutes, Jones has accumulated over $80 million worth of long contracts. 10 minutes after that, the market starts going down and Jones is getting nervous. These tennis shoes, future of this country, hang on, because they've been good for a point rally of bonds and about a $30 rally in stocks. Every time I put them on, I bought these at a charity auction. They're Bruce Wilson's. The man's a stud. Pretty good. Right now, everything's on the lows. I hope. I hope he's. I hope he, uh, in spirit, can do a little bit better than this, though. <laughs> That's right. 
he throws on a pair of Bruce Willis' shoes to just kick back, relax, and watch the market move. Like right now, I'm watching the currencies, I'm watching crude, I'm watching stocks and bonds. They're all interrelated. You know, the whole world is simply nothing but a big flow chart for capital. Where you want to be is always in control, never wishing, always trading, and always, first and foremost, uh, protecting your ass. And that's why most people lose money as individual investors or as traders because of the fact they're not focusing on losing money. They need to focus on the money that they have at risk. How much capital is at risk in any single investment they have? If everyone spent 90% of their time on that, rather than 90% of their time on pie in the sky ideas about how much money they're going to make, then they'd be incredibly successful investors. Jesus Christ. It's just past noon and the market's been trading lower all morning. So Jones realizes he's got no other choice but to start slowly unloading his position at a loss. Time to cancel the buying and sell out whatever you just bought. I got, I've got Time to do it. Move it. More, more, more behind it. So all day long, the market just keeps selling off and selling off. Every time it starts to bounce, they think they're going to get a recovery. It never happens. And by the end of the day, they are flat with a massive loss. Go, Tony. Four minutes. Six, seven. That's just total devastation. You know, the, the agony and the ecstasy. This is what's known as the agony. You're on the wrong side of the market. What can you say? It's just it's total devastation. Yeah, you know, we're still up for the month. It's just... It's just painful to give, uh, when you got a good profit, it's really painful to give some stuff back. They cost me a lot today, and they're going to pay me 100% interest for this. So when he says they, he's referring to the market, and what he means by they will pay interest is he's going to get all his money back from the market and more. Revenge trading. Sound like anybody you know? <laughs> Even market wizards aren't perfect. I think we lost about uh, 5% today, which is one of the bigger hits we've ever taken, which is drag. Take pain, take pain, take pain. You know, it's a mental blow, it's uh, an intellectual blow, and, you know, it's part of the business. This is going to happen a thousand times in the next five years to me, so it's just something that you want to live with. In the end, while he recognizes it's a painful blow to his ego, he knows it's just a lesson. He's going to have lots of more days like this to come, and he might as well just accept it and move on. So now, let's take a look at a good day, a winning day. February 17th, 1987. Like before, Jones is long the market in a huge way all day, but this time, it's moving in his favor. I can feel it. They're gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> so now, with just 14 minutes left in the day, Jones is debating should he take profits here, or should he wait for that last little spike higher to squeeze a little more out of the trade? I want to sell it so bad I can't stand it. I've just been sitting here wanting to sell it all day, but I know the thing for me to do is just not to, uh, another thing for me to do is just to sit back. In fact, I shouldn't even be talking to you or looking at the screen. I should just, I should try to go take, I should go work out right now. We all go through that where it's like we would stay in a trade better if we were distracted uh, and doing something else. Set it and forget it, as they say. And there's nothing but air about this thing. It's uh, 286.60, it's 10 ticks off its all time high, which will be exciting. And then his patience pays as the market closes at a new all time high. Uh, excuse me, but is that a $54 day in the Dow? Congratulations. I don't know how much we made today. It was, it was over $5 million. So for me, the big takeaways from this video were one, that the larger players are playing against retail, not just their own opinion of the way the market's gonna move. If you take a massive day of losses, you must just accept that that's part of the process of winning. Even though it might hurt your ego, even though it might make you question your abilities as a trader, the truth is losing is part of winning. And when you lose on those days, you have to instantly remind yourself you will make that money back the next time. And of course, you want to let your trades run as far as you possibly can. Even if your instincts are telling you to take profits early, you need to go to the gym, sit on your hands, do whatever you can to stay in a trade and let it maximize those profits to push it as far as you can push it in each and every trade. All right. Thank you so much. That's it for me. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button and uh, 
hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with the newest content that comes out. Onward and upward, pirates. Thank you for watching.